Okay, um, this really is just a round table discussion. Uh, I'm just up here uh, sort of leading it, I guess, but um, uh, it's just, just an opportunity for people to talk about the lights they've got, the lights they, they had, the, the lights they want to get, and uh, what they are, what they do, how they work. Uh, so basically, uh, we're just looking at the, the 101 manual because uh, it's pretty well got all the information in there. So uh, everybody's seen the 101 manual, I assume. It's, it's not, uh, not new to anybody. Um, if you haven't seen it before, it's, it's, on the, uh, it's on the forum. It's easy enough to find. So um, incandescents, um, we've all seen them. Uh, some of us are still, still using them. Uh, but in reality, they're getting harder and harder to, to buy new ones. Uh, it's, uh, you, you still can get them, but uh, there's more and more LEDs coming onto the market, so uh, eventually it's going to be pretty tricky to get the incandescents. As far as I can tell, the, the advantage of, of incandescents is that you've got, a, you've got a different, softer look to your display if you use incandescent uh, lights. And uh, it's more traditional, a lot of people like it, a lot of people love it. Uh, if, you know, if, if, you, if you want that sort of look to your display, then that's, that's the way to go. But as I say, it's, it's probably getting harder and harder to, to, to get replacements. And the problem with <coughs> incandescents is that they do blow globes more regularly, so uh, they, they need a bit more maintenance and uh, they need replacing more often. So, uh, so you've got an issue there. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you like the type of display, they, yeah, they're, they're good. Um, LEDs, uh, they're becoming more and more common uh, to the point where uh, it won't be long probably, that's probably all you can get. The advantage of LEDs, uh, much lower power. Uh, what uh, used to require a local generator to, uh, to, uh, to fire up your display, now, uh, now you can run off a single, uh, single circuit um, without any real dramas at all. Even really big LED displays uh, you, chances are you, you can run them off a 15 amp domestic circuit. Uh, you, you've got to have something really enormous to, uh, uh, to need more power than that. So uh, much lower power, they, uh, they're much brighter, the colors are sharper, but they're starker. So uh, if, if you don't like that in-your-face look, then uh, you, you've got to take a bit of, bit of care to control it. Uh, you're just uh, using default effects in your in your sequencing software. Generally, you, you, you're going to get really bright, really sharp colors that uh, look impressive, but some people just don't like it because it's, uh, it's too much in your face. So, personal preference, though. In, in the end, it's personal preference as to as to what you like. Uh, RGB LEDs. Uh, well, that's that's um, uh, instead of individual colors, then uh, you've got uh, a single emitter that has uh, three lead chips in it, so uh, the colors mix and you can get any color you like within reason out of a, out of a, a given lead emitter. Uh, and uh, as far as, as we're concerned, in the main, that's the way we're generally heading. Uh, if you're using things like Big W strings or Kmart strings, then they, uh, they're, they're, they're essentially a single color string, even though you can get multicolor strings, they're, they're still a, uh, a single color lead uh, in the string. Uh, whereas, uh, so uh, you know, you're, you're using those, uh, you're driving those with individual channels uh, that will give you just the, uh, yes, my controller decided it wants to cool down. Meanwhile, power supplies now, <laughs> do that. <laughs> um, so there's, there's the, uh, the, uh, the, the brief rundown on the types of lights. Let's see what else we got. Uh, well, I actually read this, so I hope it agrees with me. Original. Yeah, well, there you go, Alan. Yeah, you're, you're, you're taking right. notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty well said what I was uh, saying. So uh, lower life and. Um, uh, glows. There's the, the thing, uh, thing about incandescence is they get the color by uh, by coating the glass with a with a dye with a, with a uh, translucent paint. So you're starting off with a, a glowing filament uh, and then then filtering it. Uh, 
Look at that. But uh, if you're starting off with a, with a filament that is gl glowing a warm white, which is what they do, then you're not going to get anything approaching a cool white out of it, no matter what you do to the, to the glass. Your blues are always going to be a, a warmer blue than, than a, than a, than a, uh, than a uh, you know, a really uh, stark blue. Things, things like that. So, so it just, just um, limits the, the colors that are available to you. But it's not a, not a big drama. Okay, uh, moving right along. What else have we got there? More incandescent. Uh, rope lights uh, versus fairy lights. Uh, well, we all know the difference there. The uh, rope light is just uh, individual light globes strung together and uh, encased in, uh, in a tube of some form. So we've all seen those. Uh, what else? I think I'll sit down, actually. This will be easier. So the same thing's available in, in LEDs. You've got the rope light still, just uh, using LEDs instead of incandescence, fairy lights, same thing. Uh, net lights were popular uh, in the shops many years ago. Um, I don't know, is, is it just me or don't you see so many of those these days? Uh, but uh, it's, it's the same thing, it's just the way they're, uh, they're uh, arranged. Uh, icicles, they're very popular. Okay, different types of LEDs you can get, uh, different shapes. Uh, globes, different shaped covers and, uh, that you fit over them and uh, in the case of the coloured covers you can just uh, use those with a, with a white lead and change your, change your covers to change your colours. Uh, I'm not sure whether anybody uh, bothers doing that sort of thing but, uh, but you can do. Um, the, uh, another significant thing about, uh, about string lights in particular, uh, in, in, the, in the US uh, the, the 110 volt AC string is very popular and there's an amazing amount of discussion that, uh, that you see on, uh, on converting 110 volt AC strings from half wave to full wave and you think, uh, you know, why, are they, why are they bothering with all that sort of crap? But, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's a different philosophy to what we, uh, we have in Australia. Uh, for, for many years now you just haven't been able to buy 240 volt strings, as such, they're always low voltage strings with a with a transformer or, or a uh, or a switching power supply or, or whatever to uh, to provide the the lower power. And this is obviously done for safety, and uh, the the main issue is that 240 volts is more lethal than 110. So uh, whereas we really don't want to kill people who use Christmas lights. So anyway, that's 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 sort of uh, we, we don't need to worry about that uh, with with the stuff that we can buy in Australia. If you're buying strings from China directly, then yes, you can still buy 240 volt AC strings from China. Uh, don't, don't. Um, okay, moving right along. Well, here we go, low voltage lead control. Uh, power supply, controller, followed by lights of one form or another. Now, if, you've, uh, if you're using things like Kmart Big W strings, then uh, they normally come with a, uh, with a power supply and a little mini controller. Uh, to use them the way we do, you chop that controller off because you don't want to be controlling them at the 240 volt level. Uh, doing what we do with those strings, you'll, you'll just end up blowing transformers or blowing controllers very quickly. Uh, so it's just not the way to go. So, uh, so the strings need some modification. You need to, uh, if you want to use the full strings, it's a lot easier. You just chop the connector off and uh, connect them into a, uh, into a DC controller with the appropriate power supply to give you the right voltage. Now normally what we see in Australia are, are designed for use with a 24 volt AC transformer which when rectified gives you around about 31, 32 volts. Uh, in reality it's the, because of the, the wave shapes involved so anything from about 28 to 30 will give you a similar sort of performance. If you run them at 32 volts they just get brighter. Uh, and they, they still survive for uh, quite a long time, although the, the higher the voltage you use on them, the, uh, the shorter the life's going to be. Uh, but around about the 30 volt is, uh, is what I tend to use. Um, if you want to run them off a 24 volt supply, for instance, if, you, if, if, if your name's Ryan and uh, you run everything off 24 volts, <laughs> then you, 
then you need to do more surgery on the strings. You need to shorten them down to, uh, to, uh, to uh, no more than uh, nine or ten leads per segment. These, these things are segmented generally, generally into segments of ten, I think, with the big W strings. Uh, so that uh, what you've got is uh, with a 200, uh, 200 lead string typically that you get from, uh, from Big W, uh, that will have uh, 20 subsets of 10 leads each. Uh, now, because it's a two channel device, uh, two segments are basically in the same spot um, so that you've got. 20 leads in a string, uh, 10, 10 plus 10 overlapped. And uh, you can cut that string every 20 leads. Uh, you, if you look at the string, you'll find that uh, the, uh, the number of wires joining the strings varies all the way along the string, but when it drops down to three, uh, three wires, that is a point where uh, you can you cut it and you've separated out one of those segments that is a complete uh, 10 or, if you, or, or, or the fact that you've got uh, two strings together is it's, uh, 20 leads organized as, as two strings of 10 in a segment. And you can then uh, use those on smaller props where, where you don't need the full 20 meter string. You can uh, you put them onto, uh, onto uh, mini trees uh, and uh, drive them independently. Yeah. Uh, if you've got Kmart strings, by the way, that, that rule only applies until you get to the, uh, to the last segment, which is, uh, is, uh, is organized differently because they've got a weird number of leads in the string. They do, they do horrible things to, uh, to make it work. Uh, yeah, uh, so um, if, if, you start, if, you, if, you, if you go into the after Christmas sales to, to stock up on your, uh, on, on your, your lead strings, go to Big W. Uh, the, the Kmart ones uh, are more trouble than they're worth. And uh, they're also tricky after a couple of years because they, they use a plug-in lead. You can actually plug them in, pull them out, swap colors around if you want to, which has got its own problems. Uh, but the pins on those leads, it's not copper wire, it's steel wire. And it rusts. And that survives quite well for a year or two and then you start getting problems. You can pull leads out, push them back in again, scrape the rust off and they'll work again for a while. But definitely got a limited life in terms of uh, how long it takes to drive you crazy. On the uh, breaking up springs, this, this is a popular subject that comes up every, every now, now and then, so it's, it's worth talking about. Uh, if you want to run them at 24 volts, then each of those segments uh, of 10 leads, you've got to cut down to, uh, to uh, 8 or 9 tops to run off 24 volts. It depends on the color of the, of the lead. They, they run off different voltages. So you, you, you just got to know what you're doing and pick, pick the, right, uh, the right length to use and put in an appropriate dropping resistor to, to lose the excess voltage that you've got over what you need to drive the leads. The thing about Kmart leads, uh, while we're at it, the Kmart strings, they don't, they don't have any dropping resistors in their strings. Uh, so they, uh, they run by uh, the, the, uh, what we were talking about earlier, the, the black magic. They, 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 they work because they work, not because they should work. Uh, the, K, the big W strings do have uh, current control resistors built into each of those segments. So, uh, so they're actually predictable. Uh, they, they will do what you expect them to do. Uh, okay. Cole's ones, I think, are similar to the big W ones. I wouldn't swear to it, though. Um, I've seen them. I haven't pulled them apart. Maybe because I pulled them last year. Over 31. 31. Yeah, that's, that's what it translates into. Uh, they do that because historically that's what you got from a 24-volt AC transformer. Okay, so moving right along, see what else we've got here. I haven't read through this, by the way. I just knew it was there, so I thought, well, we'll, we'll use this as a, as a guide if we, if we run out of things to talk about. That's the dangerous bit, yeah. Um, yeah. That's where it really started and got rid of it. Yeah. So, so that's probably all we want to say about that, isn't it? Yeah. We, 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 we got rid of that. Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to know anymore, so. And there's, there's the warning. Yeah, well, I must confess, I, I've bought some 240 volt strings uh, from China. And, uh, but I, I, I bought them because I thought, okay, it's, it's going to be a string of, I think they were in 70 leads or something or other. And, 
and there's going to be a dropping resistor on the end to, to uh, uh, affect the, uh, the to, you know, to, to uh, drop it down to whatever the voltage the, the LEDs needed. And I thought, right, okay, I just chop that off, and then I've got a, a string of string of LEDs that I can then uh, cut into whatever lengths I wanted because I was uh, looking at putting them on on core flute for uh, thing, you know just core flute patterns. It turned out though that uh, there was uh, out of the 70 there was a string of about 40 straight LEDs and then the other the other 30 each had a dropping resistor in it and I thought ah oh, that is just too much work <laughs> too much work so so I never actually touched those <laughs> but they were cheap so it didn't really matter but the, the moral is there's plenty of places there yeah. where you just buy straight DC ones yeah 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 at, at the time they, they, I just spotted them on eBay, eBay and I thought yeah, that, that'll do the job for me without thinking, you see. But, uh, and the point is that you, you need to do a bit, of, a bit of research as to what they really are before you buy them. But as, as Steve says, you, you, you can just uh, get places like my cell or lead will make whatever you like for you, and uh, there's a few places that'll do that. No, 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 this is the whole point of this. You started talking about dropping resistors. Now, on my display, all I went through is give an example of the roof, I went up there, I measured how many ones could it say right up and down, up and down, chop, 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 chop. That's all I've ever done. Using what strings though? Um, they came from uh, Christmas lights or else. Star in Adelaide. Yeah. I mean, they, are they 50 metre lengths on there? Well, up there, 500, yeah. But you, and you can cut them every... Every eight of them. Yeah, yeah. If, if you if if you cut at the at the appropriate spots, that's what I was saying about the, the segmentation on the uh, on the big W strings. If you cut them at the right spot, then basically you, you you've got exactly the same voltage requirement there as you've got at the front of it. So as long as you're doing that, and and those those uh, those segments have an individual dropping resistor to con control the current for that segment, then you have no trouble at all with those. So how would you know that? You can generally. They literally will go bang with no Well, again, it depends. The, the, the Kmart strings don't have that, and you can do it and get away with it. And they get away with it because uh, the voltage is reasonably close to, uh, to what you need, and the LEDs uh, do have a range of voltages that they'll work over. It, it, in, in the. In, in the simplest case, a, a LED is a device that, uh, that turns on at a given voltage and uh, you, uh, you, you apply that voltage to it, it will work. If you apply more voltage to it, you'll blow it up. But in reality, they're a little bit different. They're, they're, they're actually a current-operated device. They're not a voltage-operated device at all. They, their brightness depends on the current you put through them. And... Uh, the internal resistance of them will control that, uh, that current if you apply a voltage. Uh, if they were perfect diodes, then, then you'd be in serious trouble. But they're, they're, they're not perfect diodes, uh, so you, you get away with it. And that's, that's what came out rely on. It's not a good idea. Uh, as I say, it works because it works, but uh, if you know what you're doing, you don't design anything that way. Uh, now, the Starlight ones, I imagine, because they're a better quality uh, product, I, I imagine that they would, they would have control resistors in each of those substrings. I would be amazed if they didn't. Because at the same time, the last job, Frank, the owner of the shop, came around. The last couple of years, I've had trouble with the blues. Yeah. I think he had a, uh, a bad batch from the company that sort of... Blues are the most troublesome. Yeah. And the, I'd lose a selection out of them, but uh, yeah. and the had a look at me set up there. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, someone's got a little knob on the uh, string line. It could be a bridge rectifier. It could it's be a resistor. You know, you've got to get rid of that because it's just because you're using 24 DC. Oh, if you, yeah, it's, 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 it was probably a rectifier for a use with, a, yeah, with AC, yeah. Yeah, really, you've got to get rid of that because you're losing a couple of volts. Yeah, it's, it's, that it's, that so yeah, it's, not, a, it's not a couple of volts, but it's, 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 it, it is probably enough to... The thing about blue LEDs is they require more voltage to turn on than a red does. Greens, greens are, uh, are similar, but uh, obviously, in, and, and it varies between different manufacturers, different batches. 
they're, they're, uh, they're a bit sort of inconsistent. Um, but in, in general, uh, red LEDs turn on a bit over 2 volts. Uh, you know, 2.2, 2.4 is, is, is typical. Uh, blues, greens, and whites, they, they, they need somewhere around 3 volts. Uh, maybe 3.5 for, for blues. So if you're running a bit close to the bone, then cutting out the, 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 uh, the voltage drop through that rectifier was in, is enough to just get you over the threshold where the blues will suddenly turn on. And that, that's what you had. And if your power supply is, is down a little bit, instead of, instead of, uh, the, uh, instead of the, the 31 volts that you needed, if it's set to 30 volts or you know, whatever, whatever the, uh, the voltage is, uh, it can just make that little tiny bit of difference. So in that, in that particular scenario, because I've got so many lights, LED lights, that because of the voltage difference, would it be better to sort of set up one particular fault with the LOR or the 16 channel to actually make that channel blue and with 34 volts coming in and having red ones at 30 volts, would that be more beneficial rather than...? It depends on how the strings are built. Uh, generally, generally they're, they're built with a control resistor that takes care of that, uh, the different voltage requirements. Well, I've chopped and chopped them. Yeah, but if you chop them at the right place, it shouldn't matter. But if you've chopped them at the wrong place, then, yeah. I've chopped them, they're all in the square. These actually go from three to two. Yeah. Three wires and it goes to two wires. Yeah, if, 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 it goes, if it goes down to two wires, then that's the right place. Yeah, because the, yeah they're obviously a single, single channel. Uh, uh, device rather than the two channel ones that you, you, you buy from Big W. So, so yeah, you, this is where, you, where you see two wires is the right place. So, no, good, no, no real problem because they do sort of work. It's actually, I just think what I need to change it. So, I have. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've, they've been. The blues were actually were getting a 34 volt feed. Yeah. The reds were getting a 30 volt feed. Yeah. Well, the reds will work at the 30 volt feed because, because individually the, the LEDs don't need as much. There'll be less. Because the control resistor is set up. To, uh, to give you the appropriate amount of current at the 34 volts that, this, that the string is obviously designed to, uh, to work at, if you run the reds at 30 volts instead of 34 volts, they'll, they'll still work because you've got enough voltage to play with, but there'll be less current. Uh, but if they visually appear to be similar brightness, then that's all that counts. Yeah. And the thing about LEDs is, is uh, once once they light up, you don't have a lot of control over the the, the brightness of them. They uh, they they don't have that nice linear effect that you get with incandescents. So uh, so it's, it's in some ways it's less critical as to as to what voltage you you, you use, so long as you've got enough, uh, because the amount of current you pump through them doesn't vary that much. In fact. Uh, it's, that is one of the problems, and uh, of course we, we get around that with our controllers by using uh, using a using a pulse width modulation rather than a, than a uh, than a, a voltage or current modulation to to, to control them. If that's gobbledygook, for, uh, forgive me, but uh, we, we sort of get around it. But e even even using pulse width modulation, uh, it's still hard to get uh, LEDs. To fade linearly, you have to fiddle around with uh, with dimming curves to uh, to uh, try and get some sort of a linear fade. I mean, you've had issues with with uh, with, with lead strings and, and fading, haven't you? I remember lots of discussions a year or two ago. <laughs> it's it's just one of the issues you've got with leads. It's always it's always a really good idea to buy a lot from the one batch, <laughs> even if you're not planning on using them this year. <laughs> Or in my case, you just never get around to using them this year, so <laughs> you've got the same batch to use next year. Uh, that, that way, if you do go to the trouble of, of organising dimming curves uh, to, uh, to suit, then uh, at least it'll work for a, for a large part of your display, rather than having to do, do individual dimming curves for, uh, for dozens and dozens of different styles of LEDs. So it, it is an issue that we, uh, we face. Um, if, if you like the in-your-face, in lots of bright lights type of flashing uh, disco effects, it doesn't really matter much because you know, you're, just, you're just pumping out uh, a heap of light all the time, and it, it's less critical. But if you want to be subtle with your with your artistic effects, then it becomes more difficult. So it depends on what you want to do, and, and that'll depend on what sort of music you're playing as well. Like if you're playing uh, playing uh, you know, a techno beat, then you you you'll want lots of bright flashing lights, but if you're doing something nice and sweet and slow and uh, carolly, then uh, then you, you might want to uh, 
do things, uh, do effects that are a lot more subtle, and then, then you do need control over the, uh, the brightness, and you've got to go to a lot more trouble to, uh, to achieve that. Okay, um, where were we? Well, there's the warning about uh, 240 volts, so uh, yeah, it's going to kill you. That's covered. Eventually. Um, so, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, even? Even? Uh, even 5 volts, 12 volts, 24 can cause serious injury. Yeah. Well, the current were like, they're talking yeah. about in Melbourne last weekend, the all they took with a tree with 50 or 60 amps of mm. five volts can have a tree, you can weld with that sort of current. Yeah, so yeah. If, you're, if your leads aren't heavy enough, that sort of stuff, you can still do not necessarily damage yourself from electrocution, but serious burns. And yeah, burns are the issue if you've got things getting really, really hot because your power supply can, can do it. <laughs> That, that's uh, definitely a serious issue. Well, yeah, good good mm. example of that is obviously the way that they, they cut the, the styrofoam. Yeah. Um, you, you're just using a, a piece of wire, shorten it out, mix up, cut the styrofoam. Mm. Uh, so that's a lot of current going through mm. there. Yeah. And uh, a lot of displays these days, they do uh, chew through a lot of current at the DC level. Mm. Ah, okay, moving along. RGB, what we what have we got about RGB? Uh, fast beyond blah, 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 I think we've already uh, covered that. I think once we, um, like we, we spoke about it earlier, just over in the corner there was a couple of this. Um, I, I think one of the biggest thing with, uh, with LED lights is, is 5 and 12 volt. Why, why not? Yeah, actually, well, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. that uh, because yep. we, we come up with some scenarios this morning, obviously, with the, the single LED versus the, yeah. the three, three uh, LED module. Yep. Um, what, what you'd use, I mean, obviously, on that Starburst, it's, it's a 5 volt. It's a single, single LED. They're only a metre. Long, a bit over a metre long. A bit under, actually. A bit under, yep. yeah, yeah. Five volts, perfect. No yep. problem at all. Um, you could use 12 volt on that. Was it you that had the ink? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll pull that out. Um, I haven't seen it before, but the ink 1003, I understand that's running 20 out of 11 protocol, is it? Yeah. Pretty much. It's just protocol. Something. Though. Close. Yeah. 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 Um, only cut in one metre sections uh, because of the voltage regulator in it. Yeah. So effectively it's just dropping the 12 volt down to 5 volt for you. And again, it's like it's like isolating a section of, of big W strings. You can only cut it at that one metre mark. Um, obviously you're not going to get any power reduction out of the 12 volt section of it. But, um, can we go back to Matt yesterday with his 5 metre individual 2D pixel tree, was it? Was that your Yeah, oh, the 4 metre one, yeah. 4 metre one, yeah. and by the time it got up to the top, no power injection up the top, ran out of juice. Yeah, yeah. well, it was definitely notable. I mean, yeah. not so much out of juice, but it became... I think I'll put it, washed. Yeah. Mm. Not the best way, it just didn't quite look right. No, I just don't see well, it. Well, 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 what happens is, is, you, is you, you're getting voltage drop as you get towards the top of the tree. Yeah. And it's, it's the issue with the, uh, the, uh, the green and blue LEDs requiring a higher voltage before you'll get anything, uh, and the reds requiring a lower voltage. So at the top of the tree, the reds have still got enough, to, enough voltage to play with. The greens and blues are start to tr uh, starting to struggle. And that's so, so if you're trying to put white on there, you'll see it'll be pink because the reds are working better than the greens and blues. And so, because my ones are 2812 Bravo, so 281 yeah. ones anyway. So Same as those. Yeah, uh, I can't remember who was actually explaining it to me, but they were basically saying something along the lines of, even though you might have two metres worth of strip when you're pumping through that five volt, what it does is it actually regulates what each of those LEDs gets. Okay, as opposed to you know having the one at the start getting 100 percent, 98 percent, 96 percent, all the way mm. up to the last one having 20 percent power. Um, what was explained to me is that it actually regulates, so each of them get the same amount, so it drops it all down to 90 percent for everything. No, what, what are we talking I, about? I didn't see that at all. Yeah, well, what, what strips are we talking about though? 2812 Bravo. No, they don't. No, it's not. It's not. It's not the. It's not in the 2812 at all. The only way that will happen is is if the strip has some built-in regulators like that, that, uh, that ink uh, strip that we've got no, back no. there. They're a constant current device, 
well, they've got a current regulator in it. So they, providing it's got sufficient volts to get the, the lead voltage and in the switching element, you can get the 18 and a half, 18 and a yeah. half milliamps. 17 and a half, isn't it? It actually depends. It depends on what they are, because... Anyway, they're about. Yeah. It's meant to be 18 and a half, but it's a, it's a whatever. As long as it, it can give you... It can regulate down 18 and a half milliamps, every one of them will be the same brightness within lead tolerances yeah. and, and chip tolerances. When you start losing... You've got 5 volts here. This one will get 3 volts across the lead, 2 volts across the regulator, which is enough. Way down the other end there, you're down to 4 volts, 2 volts across your lead. You haven't quite got enough to regulate the 18.5 milliamps. So it might only have 15 milliamps, which is why you've got the difference in brightness. Um, if I had a whiteboard to screw on, yeah. show up. And that's yeah. probably where my um, misunderstanding of it actually yeah. the, re the regulator is, 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 is as uh, Alan said, it's, it's, a, it's a current control device built into the chip itself. Uh, but it only works if it's got enough uh, voltage to play with. And that's where, when, when I came to my initial setup for it, I didn't worry about the plug yeah. in the end injection because I was yeah. the person that was going to be but, well, but, but you've got, in, in the in 2811 or 2812, you, you, you've actually got basically three of them uh, for each, uh, each pixel. And the, the, the regulator that's uh, supplying the current for the, uh, for the red lead, it, it can work at a lower voltage because it, it has more, uh, the, the lead itself is taking less voltage to, to work. So the regulator within the, within the red side of it has more to play with. But once you get up to the top, they, 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 they just uh, get to the point where instead of, instead of uh, hard limiting on, on that, uh, that current, they, 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 they can't do it anymore, so the current starts to drop. And it happens first on the greens and blues. Okay. And it makes sense. So, mm. so this year there will be injection put into the yeah. horizontal it, it yeah. but, it, but with the with the ink strip, they they get they overcome that by uh, by feeding uh, the twelve volts right down the length of the strip. Uh, but each segment of it has has a uh, has a has a, a separate voltage regulator to provide enough voltage. On that segment, so that the current regulators within the uh, within the chips themselves, I assume the uh, the ink strips still have uh, the equivalent of a 2811 current control chip built uh, in there. I'm not sure, but they 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 uh, they, they overcome the uh, the voltage at the the other end by by having far more than you need and regulating it for each segment. Yeah, okay. So what does it do with uh, leftover voltage then? It's it's well in. in in, in, in the simple case uh, that we were talking about earlier where you've got resistors to control it, all that gets burned up in heat. In the inks, I'm assuming it's got a switching regulator there which, uh, which uh, doesn't lose power in the, in the conversion. Uh, so, so it's not wasted. It just... It just uh, it, 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 do you know how switching uh, regulators work? I mean, uh, it's, if you haven't got an electronic background, it's sort of hard to explain. It's magic. Uh, it's magic. Well, it's, it's, okay, it's magic. As, as, as with anything else, it's... Well, you it's high efficiency. That's the... Yeah, it's high, high efficiency, so it, it just doesn't lose uh, very much power in the, in the translation. Yeah. Um, well, presumably with the inks, you can cut them up into smaller segments to use power in the 5 volt. Yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah. That's my theory. Yeah, because there is a... So well, I, I, I haven't. It's a five volt rail through the whole thing. Is it a five volt rail through it? Is it? Yeah, it's not like both. Oh, okay. It's four yeah. wires from the end of it. Um, ground, clock, <laughs> ground, drive out five volt, twelve volt. So it's four, four rails. And, and the five volt rail goes all the way through, all continues. So. So the the regulator is presumably on the on the, on the twelve volt rail. Patching into the, the five volt rail. So okay, so so it's a distributed uh, regulator along the entire length of it. That's a bloody good idea. Yeah, but from what I've seen, it's not actually part of the ink one double three standard. Well, that's, that's what I was, I was getting confused about, to be honest. It's a separate chip, which by yeah. one double three, Ray does this. Um, you can buy from another manufacturer. It doesn't necessarily have to have that regulator on the back of the, okay, yeah. the thing. Um, the ink one double three. Very, very slightly from the two eight double ones in that the the way the um, the things passed and it's missing one of the signals. I can't think what it is. Um, 
Ah, so the, pro the protocol's slightly it's different. The, yeah. the protocol's the same. I thought it was just a timing issue. The chip itself, the chip is a different package. It's the same package, but it's missing, so missing a pin for something. Okay. Actually, I think it's an invert signal on it. Okay. Um, so is this only relatively new style? Yeah. Strip? yeah. So yeah. When did this come out? Six months? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you can use that over five minutes without And what's five minute roll? Yeah. What's that world? Almost the same. Yeah, it's about the same. Two bucks more. 2801, 2811. They're almost the same. They're almost all the same price. The 2801's a dollar or two euro for a strip because there's an extra wire going down. And it's. They're very. So is it. I mean, being with these ones, you said you can only cut it every metre. Okay, well. Well, apparently you can cut it. Whatever. Just the distance you want. Because it just turns it. It had to change from the top off to the five off. Yeah, given, uh, given that that, that regulator is distributed, it sounds to me like you can cut it wherever you like. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty sure it can, but you so know, if you want to like, raise up three different things for a fixed rule state, yes. um, I'll cut them at any length and still run the one volt, five volt, five volt, I'll have to run three. Well, well yeah, you, can only, you can only run them at 12 volt in the one metre length. If you're going to run that in the one metre length. You length. Yeah. probably yeah. wouldn't want to cut it to a 1.9 metre length and try and get one regulator to do the double the distance. In, in, in reality, we, we're talking about something that, that is a, a touch specialised, really. Um, we're probably uh, probably better off talking about the simpler strips because that, that's that's where. Oh yeah, yeah. It allows the individual control, but allows the fact you can go further and still have the um yeah. So I'm yeah, but going, but instead of going, uh, yeah, uh, I'm like, uh, he's picked yeah. up with that. So yeah. I'm using this sort of mega tree. So yeah. I don't want to inject from the top. Well, if you do the strip tree, I think you could do, and that, and that's a, that's a, I'd, I'd probably go out by twelve of those. Now yeah. And just do power at the bottom. Yeah. That's um, exactly right. And then they get cheaper. Power and data at the bottom. Yeah. One, one connection. Yeah. 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 Power and yeah. data at the bottom. So just straight out of the pitch. Pushing twelve volt up there, it's only going to draw a five. Pushing twelve up. It's got pixel line at the bottom. Each just use one and, and if it, and if it was a little bit pink at the wow. top for white, I wouldn't give a rat because I don't use it very much. <laughs> but I, I, yeah. I don't think you would. Where was this shit last year? Last year. Well, 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 you couldn't get it last year. Very late yeah. last year, and it did. Um, <laughs> I had a midway throttle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Last year yeah you, you need it now. So your strip tree, I, I'd probably, I'd probably go that track for a strip tree. Yeah, yeah it does sound like a plan. But it's also, it sort of circumvents the, uh, the, the, the general 5 volt versus 12 volt discussion, though. <laughs> it, it, it sort of overcomes it. That's why I brought up the idea that Rob was sitting over there. But, um, so is that is an individual? So you can have red. Yeah, it's one, one individual. Yeah. So eventually that's that stuff. That. 12 volt. Is that what my question? I was going to ask a question. You're all talking about power. So an example would be I've got a gutter out in front of you. Yep. Using the uh, mass place here. I'm going to cut, I think somebody said, 5 volt, 5 metres. Uh, uh, um, Max. 12 volt, 5 metres. Yeah. yeah. And you're going along, and I've got my power supply over here. How does the power injection, if you've got 12 volt going all the way, and you're going to power inject at the other end? You so still have up, to do it. And we're still going to lose 12 volt on the, the wire. What sort of wire do you have to run back to the you, 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 power injection? You, you've, you've got to run a reasonably heavy DC power cable. To the to the other end. The daisy chain off the way. Well, it's it's more complicated than that. Because if you just daisy chain, you're still going to have voltage drop problems uh, at the, at the other end. Uh, you ideally you need to run separate DC cables. Ideally, ideally to each of your injection points because uh, the the, the feed at the far end, if you if you're daisy chaining it, it's already lost its uh, part of its its voltage all the way along before it gets to the end, and you, and you want to inject it. Whereas if you run a separate wire, then you've still got your 12 volts, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll I will correct this later for people who are dying to tell me I'm wrong um, at the other end. What what you need if if you've got a controller at one end and a big long string, then uh, because even with uh, with DC injection cables, you're still run you're running current through those cables. You will get voltage drop, mm -hmm. and the more current, the more voltage you'll drop. 
the heavier the wire, the less voltage you'll drop. So ideally what you need is a really, really heavy wire for the furthest point along the strip that you're going to inject by. Now, what I, what I tend to use, I've got some, I think it's um, 64 by 0.02 gauge uh, figure eight flakes that you can buy. Is it 64 or 128? No, 64. 64. 64. The stuff you buy from BT, BT Online, the heaviest figure eight you can get from there, it's really good stuff and it's really cheap. Um, really cheap until you order a kilometre. Yeah, but if you try, you try buying a kilometre of that from J-Car. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of, we shouldn't, the 14... No, 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 no. It's all I run for my injection, I'll just say. Look, it's... Um, oh, but you, what? Short distances you, you go run, over. So you run the seven, seven, you just bend it all together, obviously. No. You're not, you're no, not you switch well. the seven of them together and if seven negative. If you're running more than a metre with any, what's what you call, security cable, yeah. you're wasting time. Right? Yeah. E even the 14 uh, yeah, conductor well, security cables. It's in this document, that's one of the discussions I'm going to have with Andy mm. about suggesting that it's used in here because it's not suitable for. Yeah, I've got many of these haven't used it because yeah. they're not very useful. Yeah, I'll tell, tell you what I do on, on the strip that I've got on, on, on my roof. Uh, I use that, 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 uh, that heavy, heavy gauge uh, figure eight, which, and it's. it's it's, you can get much, much heavier gauge if, you know, if you go looking for it, but for the, from the, the cheap source, that is really good to use. Uh, for the first injection point, I'll just use a single uh, length of it. Uh, for, for the stuff that I feed in halfway down, I'll, I'll double up. I'll use two lengths of it. Mm. For the injection points, right at the very end, I'll use three lengths. Yeah. Parallel. Yep. You have to. That's what you've got to do to get to, to equalize out the voltages along the track. Yep. Now, if you're only ever running single colour at a time on your, on your pixels, you get away with less because it's using less current. If you do a lot of white effects, it uses a lot of current. Yeah. Okay. Now, that makes sense. I mean, for my house, over on, as we're looking at the front of my house here, on the right hand side of my house is where I've got the main control of the pixel. Mm -hmm. You know, it controls the whole house and the front yard yeah. as well. Okay, so for me to actually light up the garage area, mm -hmm. I obviously have got cables going across my roof. Okay, all the way across, we're looking at a 15 metre plus distance there just to get the data to it. Yeah. I'm also running uh, another, obviously wrong now, power injection <laughs> cable okay, to the start point of where that data is going in and also at an injection point where the next element starts as well. So there's two injections really sweet. One at the start point, so I'm getting two lots of power there, which you're saying using heavier gauge wire will actually eliminate that requirement. No, you should you should still have spinning heavy distributed how many pixels per meter sort of thing. Um, the security cable is really only good for getting the data from from your PIX88 or PIX12 whatever to a strip. Um, having it carrying any any count at all is is really is a joke. It's all right for um, RGB. Null, not null, dumb, dumb stuff, um, which isn't pulling much current at all. These pixels, I was trying to get before in my head how many, how many amps are going to be in that, for instance, as an example. Um, what do we like reckon? 300, 300 pixels, uh, that's, so say, say 50 milliamps because uh, it's close enough and it's yes. easy to work with. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if it's um, 15 amps, yeah, 15 amps. 15 amps in that there. That's on right. On right. Figure, not figure, right. Security cable is really only good for a couple of years. So yeah. to, get, to get from there to there, from, you should have, just to run that, you'd have five, one and a half minute long lengths to get sufficient power ejection from that point there just to run that tree. Using um, security cable. Using security cable. Um, obviously, you, you can probably get away with less because of the way it's distributed there, but to go longer distances, the security cable really is a... Yeah. I, I tend to use the, uh, the, the six core security cable yeah. uh, because it's a overall difference in price to the four core yeah. mm -hmm. and it means that you can uh, double up on, on, uh, on, on your power wires. Yeah. And what, what, what I use is I've got, I've got one, for, one wire for data, because that's all you need. I use two wires for the positive supply, I use three wires for the, for the negative supply. Yeah. 
And the reason I use more on the, on the negative soprano is because that was your ground reference and you want that as stable as possible, so you use the heaviest uh, wire that you can to get the least voltage drop on that, on that run. And, but even so, unless you're using the, uh, the heavier DC cable to power inject, that's only good for a couple of meters tops.